Hi guitarlings, I'm Gray over at Hub Guitar. Today we're going to work on an old uh, Renaissance type of tune from about 500 years ago in Italy. This is originally for lute. The tune is called Bianco Fiore, which means a white flower. And uh, it appeared as the accompaniment tune for a, a dance book uh, that was published many hundreds of years ago. Uh, we're not gonna do the dance today, we're just gonna stick with the music. So first things first, uh, we're going to do this in drop D and that's because that's going to match the original lute tuning a little bit more closely. So you want to take your sixth string, your big string, and tune it so that it matches the fourth string. Now of course it's not going to exactly match because they're not going to be in the same octave. But you should be able to hear it when the sixth string hits D. Now you don't want to tune up from E you want to tune down from E. So that should be clockwise. And they'll start to sound very dissonant together as you play them together, sixth string and fourth string. And suddenly they'll match. And then you'll know that you're in drop D. The first measure begins with a D major chord. We've got sixth string, F sharp on the fourth fret of the fourth string, and then D on the third fret of the second string. And then we go from two to three. So you can do that as like a hammer-on pull-off kind of thing. Or you could just play the notes. Doesn't really matter. Open E string, F sharp, G, and D and A together. So it's the fifth fret of the high E string and the open D. So we've got this. Nice little melody for 500 years ago. And then we repeat that upper part of the melody, F sharp, G, A. So it goes like this. Repeat. Then we go up to the B here on the seventh fret of the E string and play that with the open G. And that walks down, so that's gonna be G and B. And then we've got the fourth fret of the fourth string as well as the fifth fret of the first string, and now we've got a shape that kind of moves down. So actually you could play that this way. You could put your G here, and then walk down to this. So that's called the diatonic tenths. It's intervals of a, of a third plus an octave. So it's the same interval. That's why it sounds pretty uniform. But I like to do the open string. And then we go back to this little D chord. So all together we've got this. Then the next line starts with the minor chord. So it's B minor kind of, with a B in the bass and a D on the third fret of the second string. Similar melodic pattern. Actually, pretty much the same melody. Now, if you saw the original tablature for this ancient lute song, you'd see that it wasn't written very formally. So, you can improvise or change some stuff. Like right here, you could just sort of add a little bit of a cadence or pluck that chord out one note by one and wait a little bit. And then you're going to probably repeat each section. So I've arranged this tune into A, B, and C, and it's very short. So usually when people play this, they'll repeat A, repeat B, and repeat C. Moving on to section B, that's going to start with a D major chord. So I like to use my second finger, my middle finger on the F sharp, second fret, first string, and third finger, or ring finger, on the D, third fret, second string. That way, after I play the first chord, I can just stick my index finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and I've got the next part. Lift up the middle finger and repeat the third finger D note here. So don't lift that up until you're done with the first measure. Now you need to move down to what is basically a little A major shape. So this open fifth string, two and two, and open E. And then you lift up, 
but lift up only with the third finger because you still need another second fret note on the third string. And then we go up a little bit to the fifth fret, third fret of the high E string, and then open D on the sixth string and an F sharp, uh, second fret of the first string, open, third fret, and another A major again. So actually you'll notice that this measure uh, 12 is basically the same as measure 10. The more you can see the connection between that, the easier it will be to learn the piece. Now we go back to that first D major chord. Now I like to do this with my middle finger on the D and my ring finger on the F sharp of the fourth string because I'm going to need my melody to go to the second fret of the first string. If I do it that way, if I finger it carefully, it's much smoother to grab those melody notes. And then we've got a G in the bass. Now G is normally going to be here on the third fret, of course, but because we're in drop D, G is now all the way up on the fifth fret. And uh, in a perfect world, you might want to do that with your pinky, but I found that that felt a bit clumsy. So I just reach with my third finger and then come back here to the melody on the second frets of strings three and two with my index finger. Back to that B minor chord, next chord, and back to the original D. So whenever you get that cadential sound of the resolution back to the tonic chord, you can kind of break up the chord a bit, add a little bit of dramatic pause, dance a jig, whatever you like. So here we go to section C. Section C is a little funny because it sort of sounds like the time changes. So on some tabs for this tune, you might see an actual meter change, but I decided to write it uh, all in waltz time. So we start with a stretch between two, which is C sharp on the second string, and five, which is A on the fifth fret of the first string. I'm doing that with index and pinky so that I can get maximum stretch between my four fingers. It's pretty easy to put my second finger on the third fret of the first string and switch to F sharp on the second fret of the first string. Here's a little bit of a tricky move. So I want to do two and three on the fifth and second strings. I guess you could do it, you could kind of prepare that this way, right? You could put first and second finger down on sort of an E minor shape and then put your pinky down on the third fret. But then you're kind of locked in where you need a melody coming up. So I just do second finger on the B of the fifth string, second fret, and fourth finger on the D, third fret of the second string. And then I switch my second finger over to the second fret of the fourth string. That frees me up to do the rest of the melody. So pay attention to the timing, I think especially in measure 20, it starts to feel a little bit weird because um, this the previous beat on measure 19 actually sort of sounds like the beginning of a new phrase. Just be careful not to mess up the timing as you get there. You should have one, two, and three. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. One and two and three and one, two, three. You'll definitely feel, I think, as you play that at faster speeds, you'll start to hear a little bit of a different phrasing in there that suggests a different meter. And the last note has a fermata on it. That's the dot with the crescent arc over it. That indicates that you can stretch out this event, this note, freely, that it is removed from time and you can just sort of stop and pause on that note. And then if it's your first time through section C, you'll probably just repeat section C, but on the last time, you're just going to play that chord and let it hang, and then we're all done. So that's Bianco Fiore, great classical tune for beginners, but don't underestimate the challenge because it can be frustrating to deal with all of these open strings, and in the open position, if you play the wrong string with the right hand fingers, you're going to start to feel a little bit frustrated, so take it at a really slow tempo. Uh, pay close attention to the rhythm. Uh, if you need help on the rhythm, I think the easiest thing to do is just listen to people play this tune. That should get the rhythm and the phrasing kind of locked into your head. Also note that it's in waltz time, 
which means there are three beats per measure, and that changes the phrasing, which means the first of every three beats will tend to take the emphasis, and the second and third of each three beats will start to feel kind of subordinate. A great example of that waltz time meter in action would probably be measures 15 and 16. We've got this. So that should be phrased like one, two, three, one, two, three. And that'll sort of subtly change the emphasis that certain notes get. If that was in 4-4, four, four, you'd probably hear like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the actual last chord would sound pretty weak because usually the fourth beat in a group of four sounds pretty weak. But in this case, because it's in 3-4, it's a little bit different. The first beat sounds strong. Beats two and three will sound a little bit weaker. And so you have something like this. One, two, three. Notice that beat three really doesn't get a lot of emphasis in waltz time, but in 4-4 in four, four time, in common time, beat three is actually pretty important. So pay attention to the phrasing. I think it's something that you'll understand intuitively as you listen to this tune and practice it. All right, that's it for Bianco Fiore. Uh, practice it slowly, take it one section at a time, and try to memorize the music, because as soon as you commit it to memory, uh, the sooner you can focus on your hands instead of the paper in front of you. So that's it. Thanks for watching and enjoy.